You're standing in the fertilizer aisle, looking at all the bags. Each one has a different MPK, and you're wondering, which one should I get? What is the best MPK? This morning, I was looking on Reddit, and the person asked a question about this. Which MPK should I use? Her actual quote is, MPK is freaking me out. Can it be simple? Yes, it can be simple, and in this program, I'm going to simplify the selection of the right MPK for you. To start with, let's define MPK. Those are three numbers that you find on bags of fertilizer. The N, the P, and the K. The N is for nitrogen, the P is for phosphate, and the K is for potassium. The MPK numbers are not percent phosphorus and percent potassium. If you're not sure what the numbers mean, have a look at one of my other programs where I discuss it in more detail. For the purpose of this program, you don't actually have to know what the numbers mean. What is important is to buy a product with the right number. Now, why is this MPK thing so complicated? Well, there are two reasons. One is a misconception that we actually feed plant and we don't feed plant. If gardeners could start understanding that, it would simplify a lot of it. When we fertilize, we add the nutrients that the soil is missing. That's the purpose of fertilizing. It has nothing to do with the plant. The second problem with this topic is that manufacturers want to sell you specialized fertilizer. They tell you, oh, there's rose fertilizer, and there's azalea fertilizer, and orchid fertilizer, and tomato fertilizer. None of those products exist. That's a figment of the imagination. And the only one that believes that are marketing people and their customers who buy those products. So ignore all of that. The only thing that matters is the MPK. Another reason why the topic's a little confusing is that we don't really understand what we're doing when we fertilize. There's a difference between what we add to the soil and what plants use. Now that may sound like the same thing, but it's not. Plants use the nutrients they need to grow. It doesn't really matter what we add. If we add a whole bunch of potassium, plants just don't use it. It's waste. And in fact, potassium is quite soluble, so it runs away with the rain. And you've just wasted it and you've polluted the lakes and rivers. Plants take what they need. Provided there's enough nutrients for them in the soil, they don't care what we use to fertilize the soil. What's important is what do plants take out of the soil. We have to make sure there's enough material there for them to grow properly. Now I'm going to break this topic down into two parts. We're going to look at house plants and we're going to look at gardening. And the two are quite different. So let's first go with house plants. And in this category we're talking about house plants and containers outside. In both cases, most gardeners tend to use soilless mix. Right? In house plants it's usually peat based, although a lot of people are now going towards core or some type of composted wood products because they're trying to get away from peat moss. But peat moss is still the standard in potted soil. In containers, people use the same material. They don't go in their garden and dig up soil and put it in the container. They use peat moss. They use a potting mix. Now, personally, I use about 70% garden soil, and that's a topic I've discussed in a different program. But most people in containers and houseplants do not use soil. The material they're using adds no nutrients for the plant. In this case, when we fertilize, we have to add all the nutrients that the plants need. So we're adding the same MPK that the plants use. So what is that MPK? Now you might think that every plant in the garden is using different ratios of MPK. It turns out that's not true. All plants use the nutrients in the ratio of 3-1-2. Now sometimes it's a 3-1-3, but somewhere in that ballpark. And I just find 3-1-2 is easier to remember. 3-1-2. Lots of nitrogen, small amount of phosphorus, that middle number, and a middle number in potassium, somewhere between the other two. That's a ratio, 3-1-2. Since the material in the pot is not providing nutrients, we have to provide it all. So when we fertilize, we use fertilizer with the ratio 3-1-2 because that's what plants are going to take out of the soil. See how simple it is? 
Now let's go outside in the garden. We're going to use real soil. What do we use there? Well, you might say, well, we should also use a 312 there because that's what plants use. But that's wrong. Soil already has nutrients. When we're outside with real soil, our job is to add the nutrients that are missing. If we've got fairly good soil, it's going to provide nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and it's going to provide that in enough quantities so the plants can take what they need. Remember, we don't feed the plants. The plants take what they need out of the soil. Provided they have access to enough nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, we don't have to fertilize. And in fact, in my garden, I grow 3,000 different kinds of plants. I don't fertilize any of them. There's no need. The soil is providing those nutrients that the plants need. Let's say that your soil doesn't provide everything that the plants need. What kind of MPK should we use then? Well, that depends on your soil. Nobody can tell you that. Your soil is different than everybody else's soil. Even the soil of your neighbors and down the street, it's going to be different because they've added different amendments. They've added different amounts of manure and compost and so on over the years. They've grown different plants in that soil. So everyone's soil is a little different. The only way to know what to add is to get a soil test done. The soil test will tell you, for example, you're low in potassium. Your nitrogen and phosphorus are okay, but you're low in potassium. So which MPK do you use? Well, you use one that's high in potassium, something like a 005, because you have to add potassium. Someone down the street got their soil tested too, and they're low in nitrogen. So what do they add? Well, they add nitrogen. For them, the right MPK might be a 500. They don't need phosphorus and potassium. They only need the nitrogen. Outside in your garden, the right MPK is the one that adds the missing nutrient. And the only way you can tell what's missing is with a soil test. Now, I know there's lots of memes online that show you different kinds of leaves. And if they're yellow, it means one thing. If they're red, it means another thing. Those are all nonsense. You cannot tell a soil deficiency by looking at the leaves of your plant. You can tell that a plant's not growing right and that there is a deficiency, but you cannot know what the deficiency is by looking at your leaves. So what do you do outside? Well, you decide to either get a soil test and follow the soil test and add what they recommend, or do what I do. I tend to just grow stuff. If it grows, you don't need to fertilize. It's a good idea to add an inch of compost every year to your soil. That will add a bit of everything. It's also good to mulch with an organic material that decomposes, adds a few more nutrients. I use the cut and drop method. So in the garden, I leave all the vegetation in the garden to decompose and add more nutrients to the soil. If you do that, most people don't need to fertilize outside. All right, so now you know what MPK ratio to use. In soilless mixes, it's a 312, and outside, it's whatever the soil test tells you to use. Now, one thing you have to understand that this is a ratio. A 312 is an MPK ratio. So now what people do is they go out to the store and they ask the store manager, I need a fertilizer that is an MPK 312. And you're told there is no such thing. And that's right. You, you can't buy a 312. But remember, this is a ratio. It's not the actual quantity that you're buying. So you can buy a 312, a 624, or a 936. Those are all the same fertilizers. As long as they have the same ratio, 312, they're the same fertilizer. If the numbers are larger, it just means there's more in the bag. In almost all cases, the larger the numbers, the less you'll pay per pound of nutrient. It's a better deal for you. The next thing is that you may not find the exact perfect ratio of 312. So get something that's close. Three times as much nitrogen as the phosphate, approximately, and the potassium somewhere between those two numbers. As long as you're close to that, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. So the real important messages here are we don't feed plants. We replace the nutrients that are missing in soil. In the case of soilless mixes, it's all missing. So we have to add it in a ratio of 312. And outside, we have to add whatever's missing. And the soil test will tell you that. That's it. MPK is that simple.
If you'd like to learn more about fertilizers, have a look at my list of fertilizer videos right here. And if you think the easy solution is a 10-10-10, you're wrong. And this video will show you why you're wrong. Never use a 10-10-10. Happy garden.